Kyle Busch has every vice as a sponsor now, and Colton Herta and Marco Andretti want to go NASCAR racing. I don't have kids, but I feel like a proud parent watching Kyle Busch grow up right before our eyes these last few years. Our sweet but sometimes emotional boy from Las Vegas went from hawking candy at Joe Gibbs Racing for 15 years to moving over to Richard Childers Racing and having basically every vice under the sun as a sponsor. This week, the team announced that they would have an anchor partnership, anchor meaning that the sponsor will have the most primaries on the car in 2024, with Zone Nicotine Pouches. So just add nicotine onto the list of vices that Kyle Busch already has a sponsorship with. Of course, he already has Rebel Bourbon, so you can throw your alcohol in it. They announced that earlier this year. He has BetMGM, so there's gambling. If you want to throw away your life savings on sports betting, you can do that on BetMGM. Gamble responsibly, though. And then you have Lenovo, which is computers, and you know what you can find on the internet on a computer, just use your incognito browser if you're going to do it. And then, of course, he has 3G, which isn't currently a sponsor on the car, but, you know, could be if things work out according to 3G. The Kyle Cush line still exists. Still pick up a Kyle Cush t-shirt if you want to. And then, of course, he has Morgan & Morgan, the law firm, as a sponsor. So with any of those vices get him into trouble, well, he can go ahead and bail himself out with Morgan & Morgan. Plus, he has Lucas Oil Lubricants as a sponsor, not FDA approved to use the lubricant in the way that I think I'm insinuating here, but you know, it's it's out there. I don't recommend doing that. Please don't do that. And then say that break hard told you to do that. Bad, bad story for me all around. But Kyle Busch has literally every vice as a sponsor. He went from being the most popular driver amongst children because the M&M car is cool. It's yellow. It has M&Ms on it. It's candy. He was the candy man to now being the sponsored driver of basically all the degenerates out there. He's now the most popular driver amongst degenerates, which I don't think it's a bad thing at all. People got mad at me on TikTok for saying that. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're on the same page here. I don't do any of those vices, but I fully support you wanting to do that, which I think is great that he has all of them as sponsors. He's basically corralled all of the vices right into his sponsorship portfolio, which is great. And I hope that, you know, they maintain those for years to come. Kyle always wanted to be the bad boy of NASCAR, and now he has the sponsors to basically do that and the fan base behind him. He left Toyota, went to Chevy, basically started racing in black every weekend, it seems like, and now he's kind of got that image that I think he so badly wanted, which is kind of great that he's doing it late in his career now. But for Kyle Busch, great for him to have sponsorship. They've sold out his sponsorship for the 2024 season, which is phenomenal. He did, you know, get a little jab in at Joe Gibbs Racing this week, talking to The Athletic, when he said that Gibbs basically didn't try to market him or sell him well enough. They went all in on getting Oracle as a sponsor, right at the same time as Oracle signed a $500 million deal with Red Bull F1 to be the title sponsor of their team, Oracle Red Bull Racing. The hope at Joe Gibbs was to land Oracle for Kyle Busch's car, and they didn't really talk to anybody outside of that. And once that deal fell through, which Kyle said he knew was going to fall through after they signed that Red Bull deal, basically there was nowhere else for him to go at Gibbs unless Joe wanted to foot it out of his own pocket, which he was willing to do, but Kyle said he didn't want him to do that. So he decided to explore other avenues, goes to Richard Shoulders Racing, and they've been able to sell out his car now. He also has Cheddar's as a sponsor. So after you get done using your 3 chi you can head down to Cheddar's and get yourself... Actually, I've never been to a Cheddar's before, but Scratch Kitchen, it can't be that bad, right? Moving on from Kyle Busch, there's a couple of IndyCar drivers that apparently want to be stock car drivers now. Jenna Fryer from the AP was down at Daytona for the Rolex 24 Media Days before that gets kicked off this weekend for qualifying and then the race next weekend. And she talked to Colton Herta, you know, IndyCar star, America's F1 hopeful, who said that he tried to put a deal together for this year's Daytona 500, but couldn't get it done, which is a massive bummer. We're being withheld fun. They're holding this fun from us like a corgi trying to jump up onto a couch. We need to have this happen. Everybody wants to have fun. Let's make this happen. And I get it, right? GameBridge is his biggest sponsor. They're his primary sponsor in the IndyCar series. They're also a equity partner in Andretti Autosport. They're also the biggest sponsor at Spire, which makes a logical landing spot for Colton Herta, which would be the land at Spire for the Daytona 500. Ultimately, I think it didn't happen because Spire is expanding to three cars this year because they have Zane Smith on loan from Trackhouse, and putting a fourth car into the race would really have stretched their resources thin. So somebody over there had to make an adult decision while the rest of us are like, make it happen. They're like, it doesn't logically make sense. Like anytime you wanted to get anything at the store, you had a great idea where you're like, dad, let's jump off the second floor of our house. And he's like, it's probably not a great idea. 
So you do the first floor instead, which is totally fine. That's essentially what happened here. They're like, we can't, we can't do this. It doesn't make sense. It's going to hurt everybody else. So they decided not to. I, I'm assuming they decided not to. I actually don't know. I haven't asked, but I assume somebody over there made the adult decision to not do this. But hopefully we get to see Colton Herta in the Daytona 500 sometime. That would be great. He's obviously America's best F1 hopeful. People are going to be in the comments and be like, Logan Sargent's in Formula One. Yeah, I said hopeful, which is Colton Herta. Uh, he's the only person right now in the American ranks that could probably make the move over to Formula One and be at least semi-successful. So it's a bummer that he's not going to be there, but it would be great to see him in the Daytona 500. Speaking of IndyCar drivers, Marco Andretti also wants to become a NASCAR driver. He announced this week that he will have a 20-race NASCAR schedule, 13 races in ARCA. People are going to be like, it's ARCA. It is part of NASCAR now. And seven races in the Truck Series. He'll also be pulling double duty three times at Milwaukee, Bristol, and Kansas. But for Marco, I think this is a step in the right direction. In his post about this, he said that he didn't want to jump like right into the Cup Series or the Xfinity Series because he has too much respect for the guys that have been out there grinding. And it's a you know, developed skill set that takes it takes to be competitive in NASCAR. So he's starting at the bottom. In ARCA, he's racing two ARCA West races as well at Portland and Sonoma, which I think is really good for him. I think he'll have really good showings there uh, as well. He'll also make his first start of the season at Daytona in the ARCA race but three weeks from now, which will be really interesting to see Shane Van Gisbergen will also be in that race, uh, a race that both of them could easily win. So we'll see how all of that pans out. But I think it's good for Marco. He is, of course, the grandson of Mario Andretti. People forget that. And his granddad does have a Daytona 500 win. So maybe at some point we could see Marco standing in victory lane at Daytona. Maybe. Of course, I do love the idea of just Marco running Daytona 500 and Indy 500 every single year, just running those two races, and eventually he'll find victory lane in one of them, which, honestly, like, if you mess around long enough, like, you should get there, right? Like, logic would say that eventually you'll find your way to victory lane. I mean, he's coming up on the 20th anniversary of his first start at the Indy 500 in a couple of seasons. At some point, the guy's got to get to victory lane there. Everything's got to fall his way just one time. And maybe the fact that he only does one any car race a year now hurts him. But if Andretti Autosport can just give him a competitive car, I think he can maybe get it done at some point. I mean, Buddy Rice has a Daytona or Indianapolis 500 victory. Sorry about that. Why can't Marco Andretti? And then if he wants to go run the Daytona 500 at some point, again, I think it's a good idea. Would love to see it. But I like the fact that these IndyCar guys want to come over and try NASCAR. NASCAR drives want to go try IndyCar. We have Kyle Larson running the Indy 500 this year. Ryan Blaney said he wants to run the Indy 500 at some point if Roger Penske wants to have a little bit of fun in his life. But I love the idea of all these crossovers. It's good for everybody, hurts no one. Let's make all of the crossovers happen as long as it makes financial sense at this point. But add Colton Herta and probably Marco Andretti to the Elio Castroneves list of drivers from any car that want to race the Daytona 500. It's a really long title for the list I have going in my phone. It takes up three lines, but I don't know how else to shorten it. But at this point, I do love the idea of everybody wanting to do crossovers. So hopefully we can get Colton Herta to the Daytona 500. We can get Elio to the Daytona 500. We can get Ryan Blaine to the Indy 500. It doesn't matter. Let's make all of these things happen. Let's have an IndyCar driver go do the double, the reverse, though. But he goes and races the Coke 600 at night. Love every idea about this. So let me know in the comments. Do you love the fact that Kyle Busch has all the vices as his sponsors? What about Colton Herter wanting to run the Daytona 500 and Marco Andretti's uh, schedule for 2024? Let me know what your thoughts are on that. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.